Hi guys, in our today's lesson we'll continue learning about IELTS writing section. Today we'll focus on learning about Academic Writing Task 2. Academic Writing Task 2 is very different compared to our previous graphics and diagrams and it has very different requirements. In our following slides we'll be learning about different strategies, tips and how to approach this type of essay. In this slide you can see a brief overview to the Writing Task 2. As you can tell, writing task 2 is quite different compared to our graphics and diagrams and you will be given more time to complete this type of essay. You would have to write exactly 250 words and it can be more, but again, it cannot be less than this number. You'll be given 40 minutes and in order for you to successfully complete this type of essay, I suggest you to follow the following steps. Step 1. It's uh, planning your essay and for which you should spend about 10 minutes. Step two, it's a writing your essay. You should at least leave 25 minutes for this process. And the last step, it's a step three, revising your essay. And for that, you should spend at least five minutes. And just like before, you would have to go back, read again, and revise. But we'll discuss these steps in our following slides. Before we'll begin learning about our writing task 2, here's some important tips that you should keep in mind. First of all, try to read the task carefully and make sure you understand what it's asking for. Secondly, if you do not understand the task, please do not panic. It happens to many people, so read it again carefully two or three times. And in, if you still do not understand some words, try to cross them out and focus on the words you know. It can help you a lot too. A lot of times we do not understand what we are reading because we can be feeling very very nervous and anxious, especially taking during the time when you are taking your test. And finally, remember that your written essay has a good plan, so allow yourself some time to make planning notes. They can help you tremendously when you will be writing your essay. If you would like to achieve a high score on your IELTS exam, you should try to remember the following points. First of all, you need to remember to address all parts of the task. Secondly, it's using correct grammar, spelling, and punctuation. Thirdly, you should try to write in complete sentences. Complete sentences always contain one subject and verb, at least one subject and verb. And next, it's a very important point for you in order not to get a lower score or lose your points, make sure that you use your own words and you do not copy exact sentences from your prompt or from your task, in other words. And the most important Prompt.
question one two when it comes to this task it's explaining your own opinion as you can see this task is very different and I'll be explaining to you how to approach it in the following slides but when you complete this type of task when you write this type of essay you need to explain your own opinion and be able to provide different examples that support your own opinion it's not as graphics and diagrams where we did not include any opinion or outside information so just remember that and make sure you are able to show your point of view in the IELTS writing task 2 you'll be asked to show your opinion and be able to defend your point of view the question in the IELTS writing task 2 can be stated in five different ways or in other words we can call it five different essays that you'll be asked to complete you may be asked to number one agree or disagree and number two describe advantages and disadvantages about a particular topic three discuss two points of view and give your own opinion and which one you support the first one is a suggesting solution to problem sometimes you can describe two problems and then in paragraph 3 for example give solutions for these two problems and the last one that is not very common but sometimes um, it might be on your test it's uh, number five answering two questions all right guys in this slide we'll review writing task two essay prompts as I mentioned earlier sometimes IELTS essay ask you in five different ways to describe or discuss a particular topic so number one as you take a look um, I'm going to read this prompt for you so it says the following nowadays many people have access to computers on a wide basis and a large number of children play computer games so this is your topic or in other words it's your prompt and what are you given to do it is the following question what is the negative impact of playing computer games and what can be done to minimize the bad effects? So as you can see, it's talking about negative impacts of playing computer games and what can be done to minimize. So this type of essay, we call it problem and solution essay. So when you see this type of prompt and you know that you would have to describe problems or negative effects and how these problems can be solved. All right, so let's move on to the second one. So here we have some people believe that it is cruel to test drugs and other new products on animals. Others believe that this sort of testing is important and necessary for improving and even saving people's lives. And your task is discuss both these views and give your own opinion. So as you see, it clearly states that you have to discuss both these views so the first view it's a some people believe that it's cruel to test drugs and other new products on animals and the second view is going to be the other opinion others believe that it's uh, this sort of testing is important and necessary for improving and even saving people's lives so as you can see you have to discuss these two both two both views um, in your essay and then give your own opinion. So your own opinion can be either you support the first view or second view. And you would have to explain why you would support the first one or the second one and give your own example. So these are our first two essay prompts for the writing task two. Here's our third prompt and I'm going to read for you. Traditionally, elderly people have lived with and being cared for younger family members. In modern society, more and more elderly people are living in special homes for the elderly. And we have requirements here. So we have two questions and I'm going to go ahead and read it. Why do you think families choose to have their elderly relatives live in a special homes away from the family? Question number one. And the second one, what do you think is the best way for modern modern families to care for their elderly relatives? And um, as you can see in this uh, prompt, you have your topic. So this is a topic when um, the one involved traditionally elderly people. So they explain the problem you have. And then they're asking you 
to answer the specific two questions in your essay. So that means when you'll be writing your essay, your body paragraphs have to be stay focused on these two questions. For example, your body paragraph one and two can be two reasons. Why do you think families choose to have their elderly relatives live in a special homes away from the family? So you would have to write body paragraph one, explaining one reason for this problem, and body paragraph two can be a second reason explaining this the same problem basically, and your body paragraph three could be the answer for your second question. For example, here you have, what do you think is the best way for modern families to care for their elderly relatives? So be very careful when you are completing this kind of essay. A lot of times students get confused. They read the prompt and then they ignore these two questions they have and they just focus on the words in bold. They are of course important. It's just kind of describing the problem and giving you more ideas about the topic but what you have to do is to answer and write about what they are asking you for. So, and they are asking you to describe these two problems or like answer these two questions in your body paragraphs or in your essay in general. All right, guys. And then fourth um, type of essay we have, um, here we have a prompt, developing an area for tourism changes life in that area in many ways. And again, so we have a topic, we have a prompt, but what they're asking is quite different. So read it carefully. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages that tourism can bring to the lives of people who live in that area? So in the area. So in this case, do you see, you have a topic, topic explained that um, when developing an area for tourism changes life of people, right? But what they're asking you is to discuss two points, right? Advantages and disadvantages. So your body paragraphs have to be about advantages and disadvantages of tourism and how it impacts on people's life. So um, yeah, this is our fourth uh, and third type of prompt. prompt and we're going to go ahead and discuss the last one, number five. In this slide, you can see our final type of essay, number five. It's about agree or disagree. The prompt states the following. Making smoking illegal is the best way to protect from the harmful effects of tobacco. And your task, to what extent do you agree or disagree? So when you have this type of essay, you need to pick one point and then provide a reason for each point. I mean, which point you are choosing. For example, if you said, I agree, then you would have to pick two or three reasons why you agree and then provide an example. And if you pick, for example, if you decided to say, I disagree, then you'd have to do the same. You'd have to write two or three reasons why you disagree and provide an example to support your opinion. I think this is a, one of the most common essays and a lot of my students and I myself had the same type of essay. And for in order for you to sound more confident, I would just suggest you to pick one point, agree or disagree. Try not to mix it. You can definitely um, provide a counter argument if you'd like to. So a lot of times counter arguments sound, even though some people agree, I still strongly believe that. So this is a kind of a counter argument we have. If you are able to do it, great. You can go ahead and try to do that. But then again, you're not, you're, you're not required to do it. So your job when you're writing your writing task too is to show that you have your opinion, you can defend your opinion, and you can support it with different examples. Just remember that it doesn't have to be, and it doesn't have to be personal. For example, maybe in real life you actually don't disagree, but you have so much more to write about agree, so I would suggest you to write about agree, okay? All right, so anyway, so these are our five types of essays for the writing task two. And in our following slides, we'll be learning how to make a plan and how to approach every single paragraph, such as introduction, body paragraph, and conclusion, and learn different important tips. And that's all.
IELTS Writing Academic Writing Task 2 Tips and Strategies Part 2 And now we are going to discuss Step 1 Creating an Outline In your outline you can include the following things you see on the slide So we have thesis statement, body paragraph 1, body paragraph 2 and 3 and also supporting details for each point as you remember, our thesis statement explains the reader what type of essay you have. In our academic writing task 2, we have five different types of essays. So for example, if you have agree or disagree or problem and solutions type of essay, so you can write down in your outline problems and solutions or agree or disagree. So this will help you to stay focused and do not forget about what type of essay you are writing. So body paragraph one or main idea. It's our topic sentence. Our topic sentence includes the reason you are going to give. So make sure you begin every body paragraph with a specific reason for your problem, for example, or for your agree and disagree or disagree. And also supporting details, these are our examples. It doesn't have to be three. You can, maybe you can have only one supporting detail or two. Or if you feel like including more, so you can have three supporting details. And as you see, I have three main ideas. But maybe sometimes your body paragraphs are bigger, I mean longer, so you can have only two body paragraphs. So it depends on what kind of task you have and how you write your essay. But you can write three or two body paragraphs if you wish. So this is our outline. And it is important to have our outline because this will help you to write faster and you will not be wasting your time thinking too much what to write. So make sure you spend some time on creating your outline. And now we are going to discuss our introduction. Introduction is very challenging for a lot of students. And I'm going to explain how to write your introduction in an easier way. So, your introduction part has to contain three things in order to attain a good score and complete one of the requirements of the task two. First of all, you need to describe the topic, or if it's too difficult, you can just paraphrase your prompt by replacing Paraphrase. Paraphrase the prompt. a couple of words with synonyms and tell the reader what the essay is about. The second thing you have to do is writing your thesis statement. As you remember, we discussed five different types of essays and your thesis statement basically states what type of essay you have and you have to make sure you include it in your introduction. So for example, if you have agree or disagree essay, you have to write in your introduction, I strongly agree or I strongly disagree and so on. And the last part we have, it's the main ideas. The final thing that you have to do in your introduction is writing specific reasons for your thesis statement. You need to tell the reader what you agree or disagree about by providing specific reasons that you will explain in your body paragraph later. So remember, your introduction has to have three things, describing the topic, writing thesis statement, and mentioning three specific reasons, or maybe two you are going to discuss later in your body paragraphs. And here we have a complete introduction for our IELTS Academic Writing Task 2. But first, let's take a look at our prompt and then I'm going to read 
our introduction. The prompt states the following. In some parts of the world, the rate of divorce has increased dramatically over the past few decades. And the IELTS exam asks the following as well. Explain some possible reasons for this problem and suggest some solutions. And let's take a look at our introduction now. The divorce rate is increasing in many places. I believe that the breakdown of the extended family and the stresses of work are the major causes of the situation. Fortunately, although these issues have led to rise in the divorce rate, there are ways we can solve this problem. So this is our complete introduction. And as you see, we have 50 words. And if you remember in our previous slide, we have our main ideas. We mentioned what kind of essay we have and also we described our topic. So that's what we needed to do in our introduction. In this slide, we have a brief explanation about previous introduction that I read to you. And here we have three things that I mentioned earlier we needed to do. For example, the first one describing the topic was the divorce rate is increasing in many places. Our thesis statement was causes and solutions. So I mentioned earlier about causes and solutions and main ideas. It's a breakdown of extended family and the stresses of work. So remember, if you really want to attain a higher score, you have to make sure you did all three things in your introduction. And now we're going to discuss our step two, how to write your body paragraphs. Once you have written your thesis statement and shown the reader how you plan to develop your essay, you have the basis for writing your body paragraph. You should use the main ideas and supporting details from your previous outline that we discussed earlier to write the sentences for each paragraph. I divorce rate, there are ways we can solve this problem. So this is our complete introduction. And as you see, we have 50 words. And if you remember in our previous slide, we have our main ideas. We mentioned what kind of essay we have. And also we described our topic. So that's what we needed to do in our introduction. In this slide, we have a brief explanation about previous introduction that I read to you. And here we have three things that I mentioned earlier we needed to do. For example, the first one describing the topic was the divorce rate is increasing in many places. Our thesis statement was causes and solutions. So I mentioned earlier about causes and solutions and main ideas. It's a breakdown of extended family and the stresses of work. So Remember, if you really want to attain a higher score, you have to make sure you did all three things in your introduction. And now we're going to discuss our step two, how to write your body paragraphs. Once you have written your thesis statement and shown the reader how you plan to develop your essay, you have the basis for writing your body paragraph. You should use the main ideas and supporting details from your previous outline that we discussed earlier to write the sentences for each paragraph. Of course, you must try to use your correct grammar, spelling, and show variety in your vocabulary and sentence types. And there's some tips that you should try to keep in mind. And first of all, try to use all four types of sentences, such as simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence and compound complex sentences. 
also do not use academic work. if you do not know how to use them in the sentence so try to be accurate when you're using your words and if you're not sure if it's correct just avoid it and keep it very simple and always ask yourself in what tense you are writing your essay if you're writing in the past tense make sure everything is in the past and if you're writing in the present tense make sure everything is in present so try to be consistent Assistant, and keep in mind the, these important points. And here we have an example of the body paragraph, our complete body paragraph actually. And as you see, I have my outline. And my body paragraph. So let's go ahead and read it, read what we have. So as you see, our outline begins with a breakdown of the extended family and I have past my notes, family help with childcare, past family help with expenses, now people don't have the support. And I turn these notes into my body paragraph, so let's see what we have. In my opinion, the biggest cause for divorce is a breakdown of the extended family. In the past, a family was made up of parents, grandparents, children, and other relatives. This meant that there was always somebody available to help with child care. It also meant that expenses could be shared in times of financial difficulty. These days, people do not have this kind of support from their families, and this puts more stress on marriage. So as you see, I have 77 words in one body paragraph. And of course, your body paragraph can be written a little bit differently. And this is just an example for you to see how you can turn your notes. Into body paragraph. And also keep in mind, it's a good idea to use transitions. So I did not add much in here, but try to use as many transitions as possible. It will really help to link the sentences we have. And that's all we have, guys, for our body paragraph. IELTS Writing, Academic Writing Task 2, Tips and Strategies, Part 3. And now we'll discuss our final paragraph of the essay, which is conclusion. Remember, a good conclusion briefly sums up the ideas you developed in your essay. It is a restatement of the thesis and main ideas you laid out in your introduction. It usually sounds a lot stronger with its opinion and more convincing than introduction. So as you remember, in our introduction, we describe the topic, provide thesis st statement, and three main ideas, maybe two. And here we have our example for introduction. The divorce rate is increasing in many places. I believe that the breakdown of extended family and the stresses of work are the major causes of this situation. Fortunately, although these issues have led to rise in the divorce rate, there are ways we can solve this problem. And as you remember, conclusion restates what we had in our introduction and I have the following sentences. There are a lot of demands in modern lives that place a stress on marriage and lead to divorce. However, people can choose to make changes to their lifestyles that can result in a better, stronger marriage. And total count of words 36 in my conclusion. But as you can see, my first sentence kind of paraphrases what I had in introduction. But also in my second sentence, I provide kind of a solution or my own opinion, 
how this problem can be solved. So conclusion can be written differently, but it's just a restatement of your introduction using different words and kind of finalizing your ideas, what you discussed in your body paragraphs. And that's our conclusion part. And here we have our final step three. It's a revising your essay. I provided for you a link so you can follow and understand the requirements and what you need to do in order to attain a high score. Anyway, so here we have a brief summary of the things you need to keep in mind in order to receive a high score on the writing task too. First of all, it's addressing the task. When you address a task, you mention your thesis statement and main ideas. As you remember, your thesis statement tells what type of essay you have and main ideas mention specific reasons that you are going to discuss in your body paragraph. Coherence. Coherence uh, means that every body paragraph you have begins with a main idea or specific reason. Then supporting details. Every reason you provide, you have to support it with a good example or explain it and give more details about it. Next one, we have cohesion. So here we have, as you see, introduction conclusion. So that basically means that your conclusion restates your introduction that we discussed earlier. Transition words. Um, these are words such as first of all, secondly, in addition, also, however, finally. These are type of words you have to use in your um, throughout your essay. And you do not need too many of them. Just make sure you have at least four or five. So that will make your essay sound so much better. And the next part is our lexical research. Source. For lexical resource, um, you have to make sure you have different vocabulary words and you're not repeating the same words over and over again. And also keep in mind spelling, it's very important. And um, last point is our grammatical range and accuracy. And sentence variety, that means that you have four different types of sentences that we discussed many times earlier. So you have to make sure you include four types of sentences such as simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence, and compound complex sentence. And the last point, it's uh, accuracy. So that means when you write your sentences or your essay, just try to be very accurate and do not use the words you're not sure about. A lot of times students like to use complicated academic words and they do not understand. Sometimes students do not understand their meaning and they still use them in order, <laughs> maybe because they want to impress examiners but this is very this is extra so you don't really have to do that just keep it simple and make sure it's easy to understand your idea so be accurate with your tenses be accurate with your spelling vocabulary things like that so if you keep in mind these points and you try to do them in your essay I'm sure you are going to do great while completing this task and that's all we have for revising. And that's our final step three. And here we have some useful words and phrases that you can use in your essay. In order to state your opinion, you can use one of these following phrases. I think, I believe, I consider. You can also say in my opinion, from my point of view. So just pick a couple of them and try to remember so you do not repeat yourself over and over again. And these are common transition words and phrases that can be useful for your essay in the future. So just try to learn some of them and try to use them when you practice over and over again. And that will be a very good practice for you. And also that will ensure you are well prepared for your writing. And now we are going to review. and try to use them when you
All right, so as you guys remember, you have 40 minutes to complete writing task two, and you need to write 250 words. You can write more as you wish, if you wish, but you should not write less than that. Also, you should make sure to state your personal view. Remember, you're writing task two based on personal view, so you can And always make sure that you understand the prompt before starting to write, because without understanding the prompt, that means your entire essay is going to be incorrect. So please make sure you read two or three times at least before starting to write. It's very, very important. And another important point to keep in mind also not copying exact words. Instead, paraphrase the words you have in the task with synonyms and begin each paragraph with a main idea. So when you begin each paragraph with a main idea, you're introducing your topic and you are preparing the reader to, to read the entire paragraphs you have. So without knowing that, it's going to be very confusing. So keep that in mind, always introduce your main idea in every body paragraph. All right, and also it's, um, it's very good when you include supporting details. So for example, you have body paragraph one, you begin your first sentence with the main idea. Then to explain your main idea, you including, for example, example relating to that main idea. And of course, always try to smile and do your best. And I think it is very important that you guys come to your test feeling rested so you can stay focused and yeah, so, Keep those things in mind and practice a lot and I'm sure you're going to do well. Hi guys, in our today's class, we're going to learn about the most common mistakes and things you should know before taking your IELTS writing. I'm sure that knowing some strategies and tips will help you succeed in your writing section. We'll begin our today's lesson by reviewing the most common mistakes in writing. The first thing you should keep in mind is avoiding using contractions. Instead of writing, I won't be home, you need to write, I will not be home. So never use contractions in academic writing. The following tip that is very important to remember that writing too few words is not that good. So if you write much less than the required word count, 
the examiner will reduce your score even if your essay is really good so you have to make sure if you are asked to write 150 words in the academic task one you need to meet that requirement and for, for example for the writing task two you have to write 250 words as well the following tip we have is actually the opposite of what we discussed just right now which is writing too many words remember that writing too many words is not a good idea too because um, as you probably know or maybe you don't know that examiners are paid to mark your essays on an hour basis it means they are being paid hourly and they will not have enough time to read all the essays for example if you write 350 words instead of 250 words examiner probably won't be able to finish won't be able to finish reading your entire essay and that means he or she probably will skip reading your conclusion which is a very important part of your essay so keep in mind that you should try to avoid your contractions write too few words and write too many words in your academic task one or writing task two another common mistake that some students make is having handwriting that is difficult to read remember that IELTS is still a handwritten exam and the examiners will not spend time trying to understand your writing if they cannot read it you must make sure that your handwriting is not messy and can be read quickly also asking your family members and friends to read your essays could be very helpful too and they could give you honest feedback about your handwriting style and the following point we have it's using informal words for example instead of using nice try to use positive remember that academic words are very different compared to our conversational english and try to avoid using the words that we use in daily life such as wanna gonna and so on so there are a lot of words like that that we use but you should try to avoid using them and the following um, mistake we have common mistake it's a giving a personal opinion so you have to be very careful because sometimes the task actually does not ask your personal opinion you need to read very carefully and understand if you need to provide your personal opinion or not and the last point in our slide on this slide is telling stories about your personal history friends or family even though task tells you to use examples from your own experience it does not mean that this you have to describe in a lot of details about people's life or your friends lives and maybe your personal life as well so be very careful and remember that IELTS test just test you in overall you test your overall knowledge to see how much you learned and how much you know about the subject maybe that you learn from the media or you read in the books all right guys we're continuing to learn about the most common mistakes and the first point we have on the slide is giving evidence which is too detailed or specific to a subject this means you may be an expert in a particular or social scientific field but the examiner probably has a different specialty you need to make your ideas and examples accessible to their general reader so try not to use specific terms because your examiner might not know them so for example if the task topic is about money and you are an accountant do not use specialized accounting terms it can confuse your examiner and the following point we have is being emotional or too dramatic when giving your opinion about a certain topic sometimes students feel very passionate or emotional talking about some specific topics such as animal cruelty or maybe religion or politics so try to be less emotional talking about these type of topics and avoid using very strong words such as disgusting detest unacceptable i disapprove so these type of words are not a good idea to use during your academic writing or even speaking as well so just remember to be very respectful and less emotional talking about such particular topics and the last point we have on this um, powerpoint slide is not following the basic structures presented in the task so that means that examiners want to see a clear well-structured essay 
that is easy to read. So they are accustomed to seeing the structures we have presented in this review. So you remember how we had our introduction, body paragraph, conclusion. So make sure you follow specific structure and you sound positive in your essay and you practice a lot before you take your test. So, and remember, if you, if you do all these points and you follow all the tasks that requirements you have to complete, I'm sure that examiner will be happy to reward you with a very good band score. Now we are going to discuss our sentences. You need to use four types of sentences to reach a higher score. The first kind we have is a simple sentence. A simple sentence has one subject and one verb. And here we have an example. Television offers a variety of programs. In this case, we have one subject, which is television, and one verb, offers, which is a verb. And the following type of sentence we have, it's called compound sentence. A compound sentence has two or more simple sentences linked by the conjunctions, and, or, and but. So if you guys remember before you studied in your grammar class, um, different fanboys <laughs> we had, so these are conjunctions that we use. Here we have an example. Some people are not bothered by violent TV programs, but others avoid them. So here you see we have two simple sentences. The first one, some people are not bothered by violent TV programs. It's our first simple sentence. And then we have the second one, others avoid them. You cannot combine them without any conjunction, so make sure that you have one of this conjunction, one of the conjunction from fanboys. So here we have but, and also pay attention how we use a comma before our conjunction. The following one we have, it's our third type of sentence. It's a complex sentence. A complex sentence is made up of a simple sentence or independent clause and one more subordinate clause. We call it also dependent clause. So here we have the following example for this type of sentence. If we do not like a particular TV program, comma, we can easily change the channel. So the first one, it's actually called dependent clause. Dependent because it begins with if, and if you read this whole entire sentence, it depends on the second part of the sentence. It's incomplete. So for example, if we don't like a particular TV program, see like it's not complete sentence, that's why we call it dependent, dependent clause. And the following sentence we have, for example, we can easily change the channel. So if you see the sentence, we can easily change the channel without the first part, it's still complete. That's why we call it independent clause. But remember, if you begin your sentences with if, when, after, so we have many different um, those words, when you begin with them, you have to make sure that you have a comma in the middle. But if you begin with an independent clause, for example, we can easily change the channel if we do not like a particular TV program. So when you have these words like if and when, even though in the middle, we do not use any comma. All right, so these are our three types of sentences. And in the following slide, we will review our last one. And here's our final type of sentence. We call it compound complex sentence. A compound complex sentence has two or more simple sentences and one or more subordinate clauses. So the following examples look like, while many people avoid watching violent TV programs, comma, others do not mind them and they watch them frequently. As you can see, we have our complex sentence combined with a compound sentence. So, and that's what we call compound complex sentence. You have a couple of independent clauses or dependent clauses, and you are combining them in one sentence. But be, uh, be very careful. And then remember that you need to use your conjunction. So for example, 
our first part we have while many people avoid watching violent tv programs comma others do not mind them and and they watch them frequently so do you see how we use conjunction and towards the end so just remember that and make sure you practice a lot um, writing such sentences before applying them to your essays and that's all we have for four different types of sentences guys IELTS writing the most common mistakes and things you should know part 2 We'll continue reviewing our part two of the most common mistakes and things you should know by reviewing parallel structures. Parallel structures are structures that follow the same pattern. So for example, when you write with a parallel structures, your writing has a pattern that is easy to follow. It helps make your ideas easier to understand to other people. So for example, in English, we have different types of parallel sentences. And the first one we are going to review today is a subject, parallels. So, for example, um, here you see a couple of sentences we have. And the first one shows parallel. So, for example, play and study are two ways children can use a computer. As you see, play and study, words are in bold, and they are parallel in this case. And the following one is another example of parallel sentence. Playing and studying are two ways children can use a computer so here we have instead of for example playing study we have playing and studying so we added ing ending and the next sentence after that is not parallel so you'll understand shortly why and here we have playing and study are two things children can use computer for a computer for so as you see playing and study so the first word we have playing was ing ending and the second one, study, without it. So it's not a parallel sentence in this case. So you have to make sure when you're writing sentences and you are using parallel structure, they have to be consistent. For example, playing, studying, for example, dancing and playing. So you have to make sure you are consistent and adding ing ending in both cases. So that's what we call parallel structure. The following parallel structures we are going to discuss are verbs, adjectives, and passive voice. The first one is for verbs, and we have a verb parallel structure sentence here. I reached out my hand, grabbed the glass, and noticed that my watch was gone. As you see in here, we have highlighted words, or in other words, words in bold, reached out, grabbed, and noticed. And it's going to be parallel because all these words are in the past. And all of them are verbs, so that's why this is a parallel structured sentence. The following one is not a parallel one, and here we have the village has grown and becoming more prosperous. As you see, has grown, it's a perfect tense, and becoming is continuous tense. That's why the sentence is not going to be parallel structured. And the same goes for adjectives and passive voice. So, for example, for adjective, as you see, we have an example. Maple syrup is a popular and tasty treat. This is parallel because popular and tasty. They are both adjectives in this case. And the following sentence, maple syrup is a popular treat and also tastes good. So as you see, popular, it's adjective, and taste, it's actually verb. So that's why this is not a parallel sentence. And for the passive voice, it actually goes the same. So the house was painted, the roof was repaired. Parallel sentence and not parallel sentence would sound like this. The house was painted and we repaired the roof. So as you see, was painted is in the passive voice. Repaired is just a past simple tense. So you have to make sure when you are writing your essay, you are very careful with your parallel structure and you double check and revise your essay carefully. Now we are going to talk about punctuation. And the first one is the most common one. It's a full stop, or we call it period in America. So you can see the sign, how it looks like. 
and full stop of periods have three distinct uses so we're going to discuss that the first one we use period to mark the end of a sentence. So for example, when you finish your idea, you need to put a period. So the cat is completely black. So I'm a teacher, <laughs> period, at the end, right? And then the second use is to indicate abbreviated words. So abbreviated words, so it's something like, the teacher will be John Smith. And then you see how we have B and A. So B, it's a bachelor's. And then period, A, it's a arts, bachelor's of arts. So it's a teacher's degree. And we abbreviate it as a BA in this case. And we put a period after that. And the last one we have, it's a to punctuate numbers and dates. So for example, all assignments should be submitted by 6 period, 15 period, 21 period. So you see like when we have numbers or especially dates, it's very common. So we use period in that case as well. And the next punctuation we have, it's a colon. A colon can be used to indicate that a list or quotation or summary is about to follow. So for example, by these things, colon, a bag of peanuts, comma, two loaves of bread, comma, and a pound of steak. So do you see how we have colon, by these things, and then when you have a list, here we have a list of three items, a bag of peanuts, two loaves of bread, and pound of steak. So that's when we use colon in the first case. The second way of using a colon is to separate an initial sentence, in other words, we call it a clause, from a second sentence, list, phrase, or quotation that supports the first in a particular way. So here we have an example that I'm going to read it for you. Writing an essay is not easy, colon, you have to do a lot of research. As you see, after writing an essay is not easy, I have a colon, and then I have the second sentence, you have to do a lot of research. These two sentences, they support each other. The second part of the sentence supports the first part of the sentence. And this is a one way of using a colon. And now we're going to talk about commas. So this is a one of the most common and favorite, probably punctuation for some students because they use them a lot. They overuse them sometimes. And there's some students who don't like to use them at all. So we're going to discuss how to use them properly and know exactly when and how to use them. So as you know, commas signal a slight pause, but not a complete stop. And I understand why they're tricky because they have a lot of rules. So we're going to discuss a couple of them today. So the first one, you need to use commas to separate items in series. A series contains three or more or similar items in a row. So here we have an example. The girls like playing golf, comma, reading books, comma, and riding horses. So as you see, this is a items in series. We have three things. Playing golf, it's one. Reading books, two. And riding horses, three. So if you have a couple of things that you want to show, like you want to list in your sentence, then you need to use your commas. For example, if you have only two, then in that case, you are not using any commas. It has to be three or more. And second way of using commas is to separate two or more adjectives that precede and modify the same noun. It's not very common, but it can happen sometimes and you need to know it too. So here we have an example. The human eye is a complex, comma, efficient organ. So here we have two adjectives. And because we have two adjectives, not just one, we need to use comma in between. And you have to note that you should not use commas when the last adjective in series is part of a compound noun. You can tell if one of the adjectives belongs to the noun and if you reverse the position of the adjectives. So here, for example, we have a sentence, whose red eyeglasses case is this? So as you see, eyeglass case is a compound noun. And that's why we do not use any commas in this case. So here we are going to discuss about an exception we have uh, when not to use our commas, even though we have some conjunctions. So for example, when a coordinating conjunction such as and or but, you guys remember your fan voice, connects, connects a compound verb in a sentence. So in that case, you do not add commas. So here we have an example, Jen dropped the contact lens and searched for 10 minutes, but couldn't find it. So you see how we have these 
conjunctions and but and we do not use any comma so because here we have only verbs see like we have searched before and we have couldn't before but so in that case we do not need any commas because it's not a complete independent clause and that's why I would not use commas so just be very careful and then yeah try to remember this rule and the last way of using commas um, it's when we have two independent clauses or in other words two simple sentences so for example Jen dropped the lens comma and she couldn't find it anywhere so in that case do you see how we have two complete sentences Jen dropped the lens if you see the sentence is okay by itself that's why we call it independent clause and the following one she couldn't find it anywhere so she couldn't find it anywhere it's complete idea too so that's why it's independent clause as well so when you have these type of two complete ideas or independent clauses and you combine them with conjunctions fanboys then you need to put a comma before your conjunction and yeah so this is a one of the most common rules we have for using comma. So try to remember, it's our compound sentence. The following punctuation we are going to discuss is apostrophe. Apostrophes are used in the IELTS essay for possessive forms of nouns and indefinite pronouns. So the first way we use apostrophe to show possession in a plural noun that ends with a letter S. So in this case, we do not add anything except apostrophe itself. So here we have examples. Students report, we say students in the plural form, and we only add S ending. So that means students have report, or we can say students report. The next one, the neighbor's dog and students assignments. As you see, neighbors, students, all of them are in the plural form. That's why we only add apostrophe. The second one is quite different. So here we add an apostrophe and s letter s to show possession in a plural noun that does not end in s letter so for example women it's a plural form and we add apostrophe and also s letter so women's wages children's drawings geese's feathers so this is a second way of using apostrophe and the last one is using apostrophe to show possessive forms of indefinite pronouns so for example we have indefinite pronouns such as everyone someone anybody so in this case we can say everyone's paper someone's wallet and anybody's turn so this is a third way of using this punctuation and our final punctuation mark is parentheses parentheses are used to set off information within a text or paragraph they always come in pairs so make sure you use them both and typically the words inside of them provide extra information about something else in the sentence. So remember to use parentheses, especially maybe in your academic writing task one, when you're providing data or some numbers, it can be really useful. So here we have an example how to use parentheses, and I'm going to read it for you. The total number of cars, 10. As you see, we have number 10 inside of parentheses, and this is a total number. So, for example, if you have a sentence that you forgot to include the numbers in, you can actually put the numbers at the end of your sentence. But don't forget to put a period after your parentheses mark. Punctuation. And the last thing I have for you in here is a little tip that I would like to mention is that you do not need to use exclamation mark and question mark in your IELTS exam, in your academic writing task one, I mean, and writing task two, because remember, both of your essays are academic ones and you don't really have a hook in your writing task two. So just try to avoid using them at all so you do not make any kind of mistakes. And So we have guides for punctuations and I really hope this course was very helpful for you and you learned a lot about writing sections of the IELTS test.